The following video contains spoilers. We suggest watching the episodes alone in the dark. Aloha, wolf pack. Surf's up, kitties. I'm your cool Catabunga co-host, Catastrophe. And I'm ready to ride the waves of everyone's favorite childhood classic horror saga, Goosebumps. And I'm Thundercatter, and I don't want to be here. But because I have to, I'm begrudgingly alongside the stupid cat on his stupid review channel talking about his stupid horror show. Aw, come on, bruh. Just play along. Think of it as a gnarly experiment. Everyone's here to see us, after all. Ugh, fine. I'm Thundercatter, the Scientist Supreme, a future master of your universe, and your significant superior. I've graced you with my holy presence since Cat and I have found something we've both come to agree on. The absolute worst episode of R.L. Stein's Goosebumps. <laughs> Ghost Beach was actually one of the best Goosebumps books among Stein's collection, quite possibly one of Stein's most memorable ghost mysteries. Now, I will say it's probably not a fan favorite or in the top five, but the novel is very much a popular one and had some of Stein's best imagination ever utilized to form a great thrill of a ghost tale. However, when the book was adapted onto the big screen, it quickly went down as one of the worst disgraces ever of both the book and the TV show. The Goosebumps fanbase despises the TV version of Ghost Beach, since it was a colossal step down from the gold standard the show usually gave to us. Now I, your hero, can attest that this series has given us tons of grand stories, but this is not one of them. The low budget, the crappy acting, lame effects, and cheapness of the TV production really screwed this film over royally. This episode is the Artemis Fowl of bad Goosebumps adaptations. The fans hated it that much. And rightfully so, because it's so ridiculed that nobody has ever said that this episode was their favorite episode. Not a favorite book, favorite episode. Hell, even JonTron has bashed this mess. Yeah, I was a tad hesitant to review this one, since not only do I consider it a bloody red mark on Goosebumps' greatness, but a few beloved YouTubers have already done a better job than I ever could at tearing this bomb apart. How can I outdo what everyone already knows is the most laughably awful tale from a legendary horror franchise? Well, since I want money... <laughs> I mean, since I love talking about R.L. Stein's work, I believe we can find a way. Can't we just go back to dissecting the 2000s Twilight Zone? Save everyone the time and just shoot an easy target? That racism episode could use a good crowbarring. No, it's summertime, and our Goosebumps fans deserve some summer lovin'. And by lovin', I mean hatin'. But on the plus side, this episode did manage to be incredibly faithful to the book, which everyone did enjoy. So, how bad can it possibly be? If this episode was true to the original, then can it really be that atrocious? Is this episode still that woeful wipeout it was back then? Or is there some good within to help it sail again? Well, grab your surfboards and catch the big one, moon doggies, because we're cat paddling out. This is our wacky review on the infamous Goosebump Summer Special, Ghost Beach. Can I just drown you instead? <laughs> So,
so our beachside tale of suspense opens up at a graveyard, perfectly symbolizing how this tale is dead on arrival. We soon meet our main characters, two dim-witted siblings named Terry and Jerry Sadler, no relation, who are basically just early prototype versions of the ghostly stare siblings, Lauren and Mark. No kitten, these two are the exact same. They love partying at the cemetery, the pretentious sister draws tombstone art. The boy loves exploring dangerous turf, one's the mature, cautious older sibling, the other's a wild brat, and even their epic journey revolves around crossing paths with some tricky ghouls. They're the previous generation of Mark and Lauren. Oh joy. It's almost as if Stein recycles too much. The duo are staying with their grandpair cousins during the summer break. Yeah, see this old couple? They are actually the Saddler's cousins. These old folks look like they should be their grandparents, but for some reason the plot made them distant cousins of some kind, despite them looking as old as the beach sand. How does anyone get 70-year-old cousins? Inbreeders! So, since this is the 90s, there's not much for them to do at their own personal private beach. Uh. So the artist girl Terry mainly draws her goth porn, while Jerry annoys her. And all of us too! But they get jump scared by two equally irritating prankster kids, who reveal that they're also Terry and Jerry's distant cousins. Sam and Louisa Sadler. Everyone in this episode is apparently related, so you can expect that to have zero significance whatsoever in the plot. This was compelling drama in the book, but in the show, it's so superfluous that you'll forget the cast is all related by the time we roll credits. Not exactly Game of Thrones, is it? Oh man, you and your dumb hobbies. Wax rubbing. Who makes wax rubbing? I do, because I'm interested in things. Fun fact, there were actually three cousins originally in the book, but the third one, a boy named Nat, joined Camp Nowhere Pal Marty in the Realm of Deletion, since it was a character the producers decided to cut. This is the only large change done for the episode, but it's nothing to get angry over, especially compared to this story's real prominent problems. I know it's early, but we literally get to the worst thorn in this episode's side right in the first act. The child acting in this episode is straight up garbage. I know the acting in Goosebumps has never been that great, but usually most of the cast could still pull through with a great adventure overall. But Ghost Beach has some of the worst performances you will ever see. Period. It's so bad, it's hilarious. Best one ever. You gotta be pretty demented if you think that was funny. We've been watching you guys. We could see you this morning, heading out for the graveyard, so we thought we'd give you a little scare. Little scare? Whoa. I think I just figured something out, Beavis. <laughs> what? <laughs> this sucks. This is fucking horrible! One of the most adored novels of Goosebumps ever, and these are the performances we're seriously going with? Was everyone high? Yeah, it's pretty terabad. Not helping matters is the fact that Ghost Beach is a performance-heavy narrative. Stein goes for a more psychological horror story in this, which relies on strong character writing and an ominous tone all throughout. There are killer ghosts floating around, but most of the nightmare fuel comes from this who-can-you-trust conflict. The kids meet numerous suspicious characters, and things get so intense that even the audience might not know who to trust. It was intense. However, the episode utterly bombs in this area, since nobody can deliver a halfway decent performance, and it is so obvious who the villains are. We're sorry. 
We are. We're really sorry. It was just a joke. Pretty complicated joke. I guess it was. These dolts can barely muster up a poker face. It's so blatant they're evil. The weird cousins constantly act eerie, jump scare the heroes, and offer no argument to throw us off track. These villains suck. This sucks more than anything that has ever sucked before. The child acting is just the worst. It's the biggest weakness that drags this episode down, since you can't take it seriously. It spoils the big twist and drains all tension the novel had. Screw all these child actors, they already fail as soon as the race started. It's so painful watching these kids fall. But sadly, we do have to get to the end, so we'll keep going. Ah! The creepy cousins hint that there's ghosts afoot, but they leave before giving everything away. Gee, I wonder if this ghost story really has ghosts in it. While eating vomit for dinner, they ask their grand cousins about their other younger cousins, whom they never knew existed. But the old folks act ominous about it and dodge answering them. They went on about some some ghosts in a cave. <laughs> Never heard of it. Well, I got some reading to do. Oh, I'll help. What? You need help? Reading? In readers! Golly gosh, my word. I wonder if these old coots are hiding something. I do feel bad picking on this episode, since not only was the book quite entertaining, but there's some gorgeous cinematography in this episode. These unsettling shots of the beach are so beautiful. I wish they complemented a better plot, because the only workers trying to save this episode are the cameramen. Too bad the directors couldn't try, much like Ridley Scott's Alien prequels, just because something has purdy pictures doesn't equal quality entertainment, especially if your direction sucks. Speaking of which, we get to one of the most butchered scenes. As the kids are playing at the beach, they discover a dead doggy corpse. This was one of the darkest moments of R.L. Stein's book. Not only did a poor puppy die a grisly death of getting devoured by ghouls, leaving only a withered skull behind, but this scene was a grim turning point, demonstrating how deadly the ghosts were and the depressing reality that death can occur at any time, even towards those who don't deserve it. My friends have honestly told me that this scene made them cry. It was very brutal. So, of course, the TV version craps all over it. Look at that. Perfect skeleton. Of what? A raccoon, maybe. Too small for a raccoon. Well, if it's not a raccoon, then what is it? Just a dog. A dog? What happened to it? It got eaten. Sam! While the dog skeleton looks cool, the horrendous acting slaughters all the tragedy. While there was a dark moment of silence in the book, the TV versions of our heroes look at this poor dead puppy and simply say, Oh, a dead dog. That sucks. And they move along to more exposition once the jump scare cousins pop up again. Once more, giving away who the fucking monsters are since they conveniently showed up just as they found the dead creature. Brilliant writing, guys. It impresses even me. I know I'm dwelling on this, but the bad acting pisses all over what should have been a tragic, nightmarish scene. The dog was devoured by ghosts, since as the Creeper Cousins explain, dogs have the ability to detect ghosts in this world, so the monsters which go bump in the night seek them out to eat them so they can't warn others of their haunting presence. It's a brutal tragedy, yet the awful production sinks it completely. Just what the heck, filmmakers? I am not a merry man! 
The obvious bad guys claim that the pooch was snacked on by the real evil ghost, an old man in a cave dubbed Harrison Sadler. He apparently lives in secrecy on this beach so he can prey upon fools who disturb his domain. Not sure how he secretly hides here if every character knows of this, but I guess you could say... THEY JUST DIDN'T CARE! It's not like this even proves anything, since we don't even see the guy. Instead, he's talked about through more exposition. All the scary scenes are never shown to us. They're just talked about because tightwads. But again, the child acting is so funny that you can't take this in dramatically. The bones are picked clean. What kind of animal would do something like this? I guess if you're going to be around here, you should know. It wasn't an animal that picked those bones clean. It was the ghost. The ghost of Harrison Sadler. <laughs> Dogs always bark to warn about ghosts. Have you ever seen it? Do you see that opening in those rocks? The ghost lives up there. Some people say for over 300 years. Jeez Louise, it's so bad that these kids can't even walk believably. They look like total barnacle heads. Legend has it, if you see a glimmer of light in this cave, then you can see Harrison Sadler's ghost, which of course they spot somehow in broad daylight. They just didn't care. But the cousins bail, so they exchange banter with their grandparent cousins again, but this time about Sadler's golden glow. And like before, they come up with lame excuses. You, you ever hear of Aurora Borealis, Jim? Uh, yeah. It happens certain times of the year or something. Electric gets in the air and the whole sky lights up in streamers. Uh, Aurora Borealis. At this time of year, at this time of day, in this part of the country, localized entirely within your cave. Yes. May I see it? No. Aurora Borealis? Aurora Borealis? That's your big trump card? Oh, you kids didn't see a ghost in that cave. You clearly saw the northern lights down here by the bright summertime beachside. Did it just make too much sense to say that they might have saw something shiny reflecting light at them? What the heck were these writers thinking? Coming up with words is, like, really hard. Big shock, they don't buy it. So they go exploring after hearing a dog bark in the distance before suddenly it disappears. Much like Never Hike Alone, I really enjoy subtle scares like this, since your imagination can put it together of the dark horrors which just happened. It's some actual decent nightmare fuel here. But that still doesn't justify the stupidity of evil detecting dogs. According to this episode, any time a dog barks at something, it means they're an undead ghost. So does that mean we cats are spirits? Dogs bark at us all the time, so that's gotta mean we cats are supernatural too. Maybe we are, Thundercatter. Maybe we are. So the morons check out the ghost cave, where they find... You are both in serious trouble. It's dangerous to get involved with ghosts. An extra from Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow. This guy is Harrison Sadler, who is not really a ghost or an... <laughs> but actually, a thousand-year-old magic man who came here back during the 13 Colonies days to hunt down ghosts. Oh man, am I fucking stoned. Yeah.
Yes, for reals, that is Harrison's big reveal. Sadler was a sea captain who used to live here for hundreds of years, until ghosts massacred his entire town and destroyed his old life. However, Sadler survived the ordeal and hid away underground, where he began studying the ghosts and devising plans to send them back to hell where they belong. Sadler is not a bad guy, but rather a victim of the ghosts who lost everyone he ever loved and now seeks to avenge them and save the world. And those ghastly ghouls haunting the beach are really their distant cousins Sam and Louisa. <coughs> We already figured it out. There's no mystery when you have limited suspects. Yes, it is bluntly clear the TV versions of the cousins are spirits, but I do think a better twist is that Sadler was a twist hero all along, and really a... Now, I will admit, this is a pretty interesting concept. This was a plot point which made the book all the more fun, since the character, who we thought was evil, reveals this major information, which makes it harder to trust half the cast Terry and Jerry play off of. Ghost Beach was a gripping drama with high stakes since it calls into question who the diabolical villains really were and who were the good guys actually aiding them. The cousins are family who bond with Jerry and Terry all throughout, but are possibly wicked spirits misleading them, while Harrison Sadler, a creepy stranger, comes in as if he were the bad guy, but reveals that nope, he's actually a good guy who wants to bust the true evil ghosts. This is an ultra-compelling conflict which should make a grand epic with unexpected twists and turns. But Ghost Beach, the episode, struggles to make it succeed. I really want to say Harrison Sadler is a deep character. I really do. But truth be told, he's only in like two scenes, which isn't enough time to shine. The episode wants to make it feel ambiguous if Harrison is trustworthy, but it's still so obvious the cousins are the real evil ghosts since Sadler instantly pleads for their help in stopping them. He hid in this cave to avoid getting killed by them, which we do see proof of it being a consequence, and he's actively trying to stop the supposed evil wrongdoers, while Sam and Louisa don't seem to care about fighting him until the plot demands it. There's not nearly as much doubt as there should be in this. Also, how the heck is this guy even alive? He's seriously not a ghost or anything supernatural, folks. He is a legit thousand-year-old coot who spent his entire life hiding in this cave. How is he still alive? Witness the true power of my Lazarus Pit! Oh, okay. So, in short, the entire conflict is about a bunch of ghosts gaslighting each other. Terry and Jerry have to make the correct telltale choice over who they can trust. But the bad acting and weak direction doesn't grant the high suspense this tale should have. Harrison tells them to check the graveyard to see proof that their distant cousins are truly undead. And they see that, yep, they are dead after all. So, mystery solved, right? WRONG! The creepy cousins pop up and act creepy again, where they tell the kids, Nuh-uh, they're really good ghosts, and that dastardly Harrison Sadler's the bad ghost, since he built graves for them. I... I don't get it. They find their own tombs built for them, but rather than go for the typical horror twist, implying that our heroes might be dead all along themselves, the Wonder Dummies say that Harrison built this himself, so he could kill them. That makes perfect sense. 
Again, this is supposed to be rising tension, but the bad acting ruins it entirely and practically sells out the big twist. This is clearly a trick. The audience is meant to question who is being honest and who is the liar here, but the kids can't pull off these emotions. He said he's not a ghost. He told us to come here to look for something. To look for what? Your gravestones. That ghost is clever, making me think we're the ghosts. I've literally seen more emotions from the monkeys I've drilled holes into! Seriously? Well, what I call monkeys, you people refer to as the Happy Madison cast. There's a reason Adam Sandler lost his humor. The cousins offered to help resolve this by having our heroes kill Sadler. <laughs> So naturally, despite the clear signs that these cousins, whom Terry and Jerry have never met before, are blatantly up to something, they still help them by trying to cave in Harrison Sadler's mountain base. Uh-oh, retard alert! We'll keep watch. No, you'll come with us! I can't, Jerry. I'm scared. You can tell by my trembling voice. I just pissed myself. <laughs> but just when they're about to kill Harrison, haha, he comes out ahead of time and is ready to bust them ghosts. Where his dog, who is only now appearing in this, barks at Sam and Louisa, revealing that he was right. They were ghosts all along. No shit! This twist was so nerfed, or my name isn't the terrific Thundercatter. More like Thunder Crapper! Oh! Silence, Pinky! Then, I guess Harrison magically drags the ghost kids back into the cave with him to trap them forever. Oh, by the way, in the book, it's explained that Harrison lives in this place because it's a magic cave which can harm ghosts. But this is never explained in the TV version, so yeah, it's a gargantuan plot hole as to why the ghosts don't just phase through it. You're ghosts, but you can't escape a 3,000-year-old coot slowly dragging you into an average cave? Huh? Oh man, am I fucking stoned. Stop spamming that racket! It's not me, you old goat! Yes? That's me! I'm over here! Even more pathetic, the ghosts actually break down and cry. You're monsters, kids. They can't act, suck at evil plans, and cry like loser wussies. In the book, there was a unique tragic lair to the ghosts, suggesting that they were never really evil, but being undead kind of forced them into villainy. All they ever wanted to do was to live again, and they truly did desire Terry and Jerry as buddies. But, you guessed it, the shitty acting strikes again! I never had a chance to win! The first winter! It wasn't fair! We never had a <laughs> wow, what can you even say? Way to dump all over a nice tragedy, guys. And word of advice, actors, when you're giving this big, tragic, dramatic speech over how you never wanted to be evil and on the verge of death, try to do it while not smiling. Yeah, this chick is freaking smiling, smiling, as she's dragged down to hell and crying. It's impressively queen so bad it's good. Hungry! We were so hungry! Stay with us, cousins! Whoa! Dude, that's creepy. As if the acting wasn't cheap, the special effects are good competitors, too. The same series which brought us the Haunted Mask, folks. Then, lightning strikes the cave, ending them all. Harrison Sadler dies, heroically locking the ghosts away forever. Jerry, next time you see me sleeping, don't wake me up. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
<laughs> it's so funny you'd forget that our cousins were evil and died horribly. Oh man, am I fucking stoned. So they return home, happy that it's all over. But when everything is coming up Millhouse, we get to our twist ending. Sadler's dog is still alive and apparently followed the twerps home. Boomer will live. Where the mutt exposes the grand cousins as ghosts too. Yep. The old couple were dead all along, and the children are now stuck with them. Now, in the book, this was a horrifying twist ending, since the adults closed in on them, readying to devour their own family to hide their secret. But on the show, the writers chickened out on that finale, and the old couple are only going to consume the dog instead. Yep. The kids are in no danger, but the STUPID DOG is pretty much granting us a lamer, sillier cliffhanger. Terry, Jerry, why don't you kids go and set the table while Agatha gets busy in the kitchen? Don't say you're not hungry. Who cares? And that was the ending of the infamous Goosebumps tale, Ghost Beach. More like Ghost Bitch, cause I was a fucking bitch to suffer through. This episode is awful. It truly is. Ghost Beach is dark tower levels of a bad adaptation. Ghost Beach sucks, but the saddest part is, it didn't have to suck. It only needed effort. This was one of Stein's greatest Goosebumps books, but the cheap production of it was dumbed down to a laughably negative level. I cannot, for the nine lives of me, find anyone who unironically loves this fable. The only people who'd like this are the ones who find it so bad it's good. The effects are pitiful, the plot is watered down, the twists are goofy, the beach is rarely used as an awesome setting, the scares are lame, the villains suck, and like we've been crying about for over an hour, the acting is outright doggy do. I sincerely hope that Goosebumps reboot salvages this episode because there are a lot of good ideas here, but our old show fails at the execution. I love the idea of a psychological thriller making us question who is a vicious ghost trying to kill you and who's really a friend trying to save you. But the Goosebumps team just couldn't pull it off. I'd recommend just skipping this one and instead grant a chance to the book. Since the page version is the real big kahuna compared to this. If we mess up, the ghost won't stop killing us. He'll haunt our house, our family, get revenge forever. I have never needed a beer so bad in my entire life. Ghost Beach has the spirit to be a breathtaking nightmare, but sadly, took a total wipeout. Thanks for joining me, Dr. Thundercatter. Wasn't this fun? Well, no. No. Just no. Hell no. This was so absolutely fucking horrible. Why the fuck did you make me do this, cat? Why? Why? I hate you, cat. This was agonizing. Um, I'm your host, Catastrophe, and- <laughs> <laughs>
Hickadoodle, I mean. Well, Hickadoodle is that special feeling you get when you hold hands with your best gal. It's cheering real loud for the home team. It's catching the perfect wave. It's obeying all the rules. No way! <laughs> hey, are we in Tiananmen? Because I see a square. Hickadoodle! That ghost is clever, making you think we're the ghosts.